215 great British pounds for a video game released in 2005? 215 pounds. Could you imagine the amount of Charizard cards I might be able to purchase for the price of just that one game? In the current video gaming market of Ultra 19K Megatron, high def surround sound virtual reality benchmarks that video games are now expected to reach yet seldom actually do. Unfortunately, I'm looking at you, Scarlet and Violet. I actually don't mind the game, but the performance issues, not so good. We often find ourselves going back to the past in order to play an old video game that we loved growing up. For example, I'm not sure why I did this a few weeks ago, but I went back to play Championship Manager 0304. Despite the fact I have the newest football manager at hand to play, I for some reason wanted a blast from the past. You know, as a six year old kid, I didn't understand the mechanics too much. I just wanted to continue United's dominance in football. It's definitely a combination of things that I suppose make us just love the nostalgia of old games. I guess it's like remembering the simpler times before games were like 60 quid a game. Oh, and a Freddo bar was like 10p. Excuse me, they're what price now? That is a joke. There's also an element of preservation of history, and I suppose the authenticity that it portrayed. Maybe you just preferred the way it used to be. Retro gaming is just ingrained in the entire industry. Why else would you have a bar that have retro arcade games around it? In fact, some of the earliest content I actually found on YouTube was the Angry Video Game Nerd, and his old review of games like Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle. It's not even a game I'd actually played, but it was more about the blast from the past of what video games used to be. It's just a part of video gaming now. Yet, for some reason, Pokemon games can be notoriously difficult to access due to the quite frankly outrageous prices that you will find for the old video games. There's two general elements to this wanting to play the old games and wanting to own the old games. And both unfortunately suffer due to the fact that the games are through the roof in price. With seemingly no way down from their stratospheric high, the Nintendo Switch Online has allowed for a bit of alleviation in this thanks to adding some of the old games to the online library. So if you were to skip out and setting yourself back a solid £55 for Pokemon Stadium on the Nintendo 64, and just play it on the Nintendo Switch then you're set. But even then that also has its own drawbacks. In a world where backwards compatibility is thought quite favourably on, not being able to play any of the old games on the current generation minus a few select titles is a bit silly in my opinion. Your options are emulation or setting yourself back essentially a very small fortune in order to get these games. I do see this as a big problem and it's time to explore how we got here. Okay, it's time to do a price breakdown of all the old Pokemon games that you can buy and how much it would set you back to purchase them outright. I will break this down in both the main series games and also all the sub-series games. It's important to note that prices can fluctuate a bit as I am looking at locate UK sources in order to be able to get the games such as CEX or eBay. So, Pokemon has a lot of games. And I mean a lot of them. Some titles are not included due to the accessibility to these games no longer being legitimately obtained. For example, my Pokemon Ranch is no longer available due to it being for the store of the Nintendo Wii, and the shop on the Wii no longer exists. The same goes for Pokemon Dream Radar, and the 3DS as well. I'm also not including any game that's on the Nintendo Switch as they are accessible to buy now on the current console, including on their online store. So therefore the prices would not include things like Scarlet and Violet or any of the DLCs for Sword and Shield. To buy every single Pokemon main series game before the Switch, including the original games available alongside the third games and the remakes, you are looking at around £1,200 depending on the fluctuation of where you get it from, the conditions of the games, whether they are loose or in a box and include things like shipping. For example, if you were to buy a Pokemon Yellow box with the manual, this could cost you a price like £150. But if you were to buy it unboxed, it could cost you around £35. For the sake of this video, I've gone off the lower prices when calculating the £1,200 price. Otherwise, the price for this could balloon up even further. That being said, here are some of my personal highlights in terms of prices for the main series games. Pokemon Platinum could cost you a whopping £80 compared to £35 for Diamond. This is definitely a combination of lower printed versions of the third game compared to the two original games of Generation 4, and the fact that people generally see Platinum to be a superior game to Diamond or Pearl. Generation 6 games could be going for as cheap as £25, when Soul Silver could range from £70 to £150, depending on whether or not it's boxed with the Pokewalker or just a game on its own. That is a lot of money. 
But that's the main series games. What about the series in general? By my estimation, unless I've missed a game and I don't think I have, it can knock you back a whopping £2,300. And that is a lot of money to leave your bank account. I've already mentioned the absolute crazy insanity of XD Gale of Darkness. But what about the other prices that are also quite expensive? Well, Pokemon Channel might knock you back a good 60 plus pounds if you were to get it on the GameCube. Explorers of the Sky seems to be one of the best mystery dungeon games. That one could knock you back a solid 70 pounds. Something worth of note as well, the games generally classified as the definitive editions or the third games do tend to be more expensive. As of Platinum compared to Diamond, or Explorers of the Sky compared to Explorers of Darkness and Time. This is most likely down to the fact that there's less printing availability for these games, and being the refined editions also mean it's probably the best possible experience you can get from it. There's also more options for the base games. If you want to play the base story of Generation 4, you can either play Diamond or Pearl. If you want to play the best edition of Generation 4, it will cost you more. It's um quite insane, really. The above prices are at least the emulation being the only method in exploring and experiencing these games again. Now, uh, this is quite a touchy subject, especially with YouTube and, you know, Nintendo. So, to quote streamers of the past, please be nice to us, Nintendo. I mean, I totally wouldn't support emulation anyways. No way. I definitely didn't download a PS2 one to play Dragon Ball Z Budokai 3 recently to remind myself of the fun old times from when I was a kid and trying to beat my older cousin who knew the game much better than me. No, but being serious, it is a very difficult topic, especially with the news of Citra, etc. But to fans and people in general, Emulating games is the only way to navigate the prices at hand that are absolutely ridiculous. Preservation for games is extremely difficult, especially when old games are no longer going to be in print from 25 years ago. Physical copies will always be capped out on an old game to whatever currently exists, and even older ones like Game Boy games are susceptible to the batteries running dry, meaning you would have to spend money and go out of your way to replace them. This is further amplified by the fact that Pokemon is exclusive to Nintendo consoles only, as it's an IP owned by them and them alone. For example, if you wanted to pick up an old Call of Duty game, let's say Modern Warfare 2, as that was the original introduction for me into this series, you can get that on the PlayStation 3, on the Xbox 360, Windows, and there's even a Nintendo DS version made for it. There's multiple different options open to you to buy the game and that makes the price a bit lower, especially if it's not currently in demand. Pokemon on the other hand is always in demand. It's arguably the most popular franchise ever, especially if you look at the amount of money that it makes. Combining that with the fact that the games are exclusive on Nintendo systems severely limits the amount of copies available which means the price is higher. Now the natural solution to this is to make the games available online as a downloadable game. The problem is this doesn't exist outside of the realm to the Nintendo Switch Online, which is only for a select few games including Pokemon Snap, the Stadiums, Puzzle League and the TTG game. It did used to exist on the 3DS with some of the old Pokemon games existing there like Red and Blue, but the store for the 3DS no longer exists which means there's no longer downloadable ways to obtain these games on that console. As such it means the only legitimate avenue and option to play these old games is via emulation. Because the price would set you back way too much to buy a physical copy for some of these games, and there is no online download available for them either. The thing is, emulation wouldn't be for everyone as well. Some like to collect for collection's sake. For example, I own an entire Bleach manga, and I plan to get all the ones for Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z as well. I don't actually read them, I just like to own them. Similar to how I want a full set of Paradox Rift and Pokemon 151, I'm not going to play them at tournaments, I just want to own them. There's also some people who just prefer to play it on console and not on their computer. But being in demand means the price is high, which means people can't buy it to play it, so they emulate it. And at the same time, collectors who want it have to pay a high price to get it. It's just an endless loop. And even though emulation can bring back accessibility to the old games, Features are missing from them and we can't access them and that can limit your experience. A key one is to look at the fact that there's no access in transferring Pokemon across games. For example, let's look at the games on the Nintendo Switch like Pokemon Stadium and Stadium 2. When playing the later rounds, it can actually be a bit difficult as the teams are built in more frustrating ways and the AI is significantly better. Oh, and the amount of nonsense that you face is much higher. Not only do you already have that to contend with, the game further adds additional barriers for you when it comes to the move sets. For example, Alakazam is stronger than Kadabra. I mean, obviously, it's the evolution of it. 
However, Alakazam has access to Psybeam for its main attacking move, while Kadabra has Psychic, which is the stronger attack. This is just one specific example, but the moves that you get for stronger Pokemon can be much weaker and therefore limit you when you're playing, especially when the pre-evolutions will have the stronger moves. Well, to combat this, there is a method to allow you to transfer Pokemon over from one game to another, and you can then have a much better move set in order to combat the later rounds that could be problematic. Alakazam could have the most optimum moveset even further in Pokemon Stadium 2, as it has access to Thunder Punch, Ice Punch and Fire Punch, all of which were classified as special due to the pre-special split in Pokemon. I mean, Kadabra has Thunder Punch in Stadium 2, imagine the stronger Alakazam having that. But there's no access to these games and transferring over Pokemon. Using emulators or even the current method of the Nintendo Store does not bridge that gap. If we want to go one step further, we can look at the complete convoluted mess and messing about you have to do in order to get Pokemon from generation to generation. Bear in mind this also involves access to Pokemon Bank. In fact, is that even possible now? I'm gonna have to fact check this. Right, so I found a graphic from a Reddit user in 2024, and provided you still have access to Pokemon Bank, you can transfer Pokemon over from some of the games. It's actually very strange to think if that app just went down, there was no possible way to transfer Pokemon from the old games. Which is crazy because the 3DS store is now gone, and this is the only way you can transfer Pokemon over. Catch them all was something that was quite synonymous with Pokemon in the West due to the anime, and it's not really possible to do anymore. And when it is, it's so convoluted, slow and a mess why would you spend all your time doing that it would just drive you insane i think part of this accessibility to old games really helped whip up the hype from pokemon presents for the anniversary in 2024 there are a lot of rumors about potentially getting the ports from the old games similar to how red blue and yellow were on the 3ds the access these games had to the virtual console allowed generation one pokemon to be transferred over to pokemon bank and then you follow all the 16,000 steps in order to get to pokemon home even now with all the new games that are created new methods of exploration in Pokemon, we simply crave accessibility to the older games. And not just the main series games, but games like XD, Gale of Darkness, or Pokemon Channel. Okay, maybe not that last one. But it does go to show the preference for the old mechanics and old familiar ideas. People want to journey through the old games again. Transfer over your Charizard to Pokemon Stadium to tackle difficult rounds. Use your Generation 2 Scissor in competitive play. Have a full living dex. So it's no wonder when the potential hype and idea was thrown around of the old games becoming available on the Switch. Everyone jumped on the hype train. I do think the best possible way around this is to release the old games onto the store of the Switch, or add them onto the Nintendo Switch's online system, just including the additional of being able to transfer over Pokemon. It hits the best of both worlds for everybody really. Once the games are put up on the store or on the Nintendo Switch online, those who really want to play the games can access them without an emulator. Due to the demand going down in physical copies, the price will drop in general for those who want a physical copy. For example, if you look at the price of Pokemon Stadium cartridges from March 20. 2023 to June 2023, there is a notable difference in price after it was announced to be released on the Virtual Console in April 2023. It drives the price down for those who want to collect all the games, and at the same time provides accessibility to those who want to play it on console, while adding functionality of transferring Pokemon across the games. Pokemon is such a commodity there's no solution to making the older games drop in such a significant margin, but at a minimum this would definitely drop the price a little. Or you know, do that thing that we totally never condone on this channel because we are very good citizens who don't condone bad things. Please don't come for my channel. Thanks for watching guys. So it's time to ask everybody, what do you think of the prices of the old Pokemon games? Do you think it's ridiculous and what do you think is the solution? Let me know in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe as it really helps out my channel. We're aiming for 1000 subscribers this year, so go hit that button. Oh and follow me on Twitter for some more Pokemon opinions. See you guys.